Hello, in this video you will learn about principal component analysis and how it is used in machine learning application. I have tried to explain it in a very simple way. So why we need a principal component analysis? We will consider an example of identification of fruits that is an application of machine learning. So to identify the fruit, first we need to give an input fruit images to our machine learning model and the main step is to extract the features important features from these images for further processing now there may be a lot of features for example to identify the fruit type of fruit we may use these three types of features like a height of each image width and color of that particular fruit image so in supervised machine learning, we'll have one column as an output also during a training phase. You may have a lot of features depends upon your application. For example, to identify the person from its image, you may use a hundreds of features. For example, a distance between eye, size of eye, size of eyebrows, width of eyebrows, uh, the size of nose, height of nose, width of nose, distance between eye and nose. So, lot of features can be used. So, maybe there are hundreds of uh, features, thousands of features. But one problem is that if you use a more number of features, then computation will also increase and the memory uh, we need for application will also increase. So, to avoid this, we should use the features which are important, which carries the more information and we should delete the features which has a, which carries the redundant information. So, we have to keep just important features. So, no need to store all these uh, features which carries the same information. We can keep only one feature from that. For example, I am having 10 features and out of these 10 features, five features carries the same information so instead of that five features we can use only one feature so the features which carries the features which has variations in their information these features are important for further processing in machine learning now here one thing you have to understand the features uh, means a dimension if there are three features means you have a three dimensions so if you are 100 features there are 100 dimensions so aim of principal component analysis is to keep only useful features and delete an unwanted feature which carries the redundant information that means actually we are reducing a dimension of our data so that's why principal component analysis is used for dimensionality reduction. So in machine learning, we are reducing a number of features so that our processing will be easy and the memory requirement will also be reduced. Now we understood that we should reduce the number of features, that means number of dimensions of the given data set. But which features we have to consider and which we can avoid? That means which features are important that we have to decide. So consider this example where two features are shown. Only two features are there x1 and x2. So uh, these features are plotted in a two dimension plane. So these are the features. Now we know that the features which has a lot of variations, these features are important. We should avoid the similar features. So, we want to convert these two dimensional features into one dimension so that we can reduce our computation. So, to, so to convert this into one dimension, we can project this point on x2 axis. So, if we project all these points on x2 axis, we get a new set of features like this. So we have converted these two dimension features into one dimension and now uh, it is easy to explain and it is easy to find the information from this one dimension. So we can either plot it in on x2 axis or we can project it on x1 axis. So we get this type of features in one dimension. That means we are converting two dimension data into one dimension. 
so it is very easy to understand if there are only two dimensions but if we increase number of dimensions suppose there are 100 dimension it is very difficult to imagine so this is the important concept that we have to convert the high dimensional data into low dimensional so that it will be easy for us for further processing. Now consider this example. Suppose our data is like this. Again, it is two dimensional data and uh, we have project this data on X1 axis. You can observe here that if you project these points on X1 axis, then you will get a projection as a two point. It is converted into one dimension that is on X1 axis. If you project this data on this X2 axis, you will get the projection like this. Uh, now here you can observe that if you consider data projected on this x2 axis, the variation is more. So you get a lot of information if you project this on this x2 axis. Whereas the variation is very less if you project this data on x1 axis. So that means this projection carries more in information which is more important for our further processing. Whereas this projection carries a very less information about spread of this data. So, so we get a lot of information when we project data on X to X. So here we can clearly decide that take this conversion of two dimensional into one dimension, whereas you can neglect this. So if you want to convert this type of data from two dimension to one dimension, better to consider this in a machine learning application because you get here variation. So you can design, you can identify correctly. Now take the example of this type of data. This is our data which is plotted in two dimension. If you project this data on this x1 axis you will get a variation in this range and if you project it on this x2 axis you will get a same variation now here it is very difficult to decide which projection or which axis we should consider for further processing because both are giving almost same variation so for that what we can do we can change we can rotate our axis it is same as we are changing the viewpoint. Hum apna view change kar rahe ho. It is like that. So, for example, suppose you are observing data in this direction and this direction. Now you are changing your viewpoint. You are observing data from this direction and from this direction. So, if we change our viewpoint, now if you project this data, we can see that if you project on this new axis, new y dash axis, you will get a less variation. Whereas when you project this uh, data on new x dash axis, then you will get a more variation. So now you can decide this axis get gives us a better variation, better representation of data. Because from this, we will come to know the how data is spread it. What is the spread of data? What is the variation in data? So in this case, what we have done, we have changed our viewpoint. We have rotated this uh, axis. Then we are able to clearly decide which axis, which projection we should. This new axis are called the principal component. These are our principal component. So here one thing you have to note, if there are two dimensions, you will get a two principal components. These are, if there are 100 features, we get a 100 principal components. Now how to decide which of these two axes is better, which of these two principal components are better. So for that, we have to use some mathematical concept. So here it is shown our new axis x dash and y dash. These are our principal component. So to find this new axis, we have to compute eigenvectors that we are going to see how to compute this and how to decide which axis is better. So these are actually eigenvectors which is computed from our data. The eigenvector which has the highest eigenvalues 
if you have studied a mathematics you know that eigen vectors are always associated with eigen value some scalar values there so the eigen vector with the highest eigen value is our first principal component which gives us a more spread of data more variance more variation in data in this case this eigen vector will have a highest eigen value and this will have a less eigen value than this x dash x from our data we have to compute eigen vectors for eigen vectors eigen values uh, will be computed now this is easy because there are only two axes so we'll keep a one axis which is having a highest eigen vector but suppose there are 100 principal components because 100 dimensions are there so 100 principal components we got so out of this 100 principal components and from this uh, we can select the principal components with a higher eigen value so i may keep only first 25 principal component whose eigen values is higher so we have reduced our dimension from 100 to 25 as you know the principal components are computed from the given features of data so we can write a pc principal components as a linear combination of the input features so here f1 f2 f3 are our feature data set there are three features suppose then it will extend up to f3 and if uh, there are no more number of features you can add more terms so principal components are the linear combination of this individual features or variable now as we have seen uh, we have to compute eigen vectors and we get a corresponding eigen values and if you arrange this principal component these are our input features and uh, from this features we have computed suppose principal components and if you arrange this principal components as per the values of eigen values then p1 principal component will carry a highest information about your data so this pa is having a highest eigen value so it carries the highest information uh, here in this example it is shown that 70% of information is carried by principal component p1 the p2 will carry a less information that p1 and here it is shown that it is a 16% and after that the information reduces so out of this features principal components you can consider if you consider only two topmost principal components p1 and p2 you are saving 86% of information of your data so you can neglect all other principal component or you can consider p3 also if you want a more accurate result but within a few principal components you will get a lot of information about your data so we can delete or neglect all other principal component so now our computation is very easy we are having only few principal components we can work on this principal component which carries the information about our data so we can process further for identification uh, for recognition using this principal component which uh, reduces lot of computation memory also so this is about a basic idea of principal component so quickly go through the benefits of this dimension reduction uh, so it is a process of converting data set having vast dimension into a lesser dimension and it ensures that uh, this more information will be stored just revise what is principal component um, analysis we are transferring a data into a new data set and that is called a principal component this components are linear combination of original variables and these are orthogonal they are perpendicular to each other and the first principal component uh, carries a more information that is uh, more variation in of the original data when to use this pca whenever we need fewer features from the higher features and for the dimensionality reduction now what are the benefits uh, data uh, it compresses the data so storage space requirement is reduced uh, it reduces the time for computation 
then it eliminates the redundant features and it improves our model performance hope that you understood the basic related to this principal component analysis in next lecture we'll see how to compute this principal component analysis from the given data that is also related to machine learning application so thank you for watching this video please subscribe the channel like the video and share this video